Hello on Venturist video blog. In this video I will show you how I made water system in my van conversion. It will include the water tank, pump, water accumulator, an AC electrical water heater and flush toilet electrical valve and the shower and the sink. We will test all this out, includes electrical heater. Let's see how I will do all that. And here is what I did with my water system. It all starts from the water tank. It's 150 liters water tank and here you can see I make an air inlet that allows air goes to the tank because when you take water from the tank with the pump you make a low pressure zone and it, it needs some new air to refill the tank. Here the main outlet from the tank. It has a valve and it has mechanical filter that can stop big pieces of uh, dirt go to the pump. Next it's my pump. Uh, it's Sureflow pump and I couldn't recommend more this company because it makes uh, general great well-known pumps. Next it's a water accumulator. It needs to maintain consistent pressure in my system and I will talk about it a little later too. Next cold water splits to the three sides. One goes from with the valve again to the shower. My shower is there. And it also splits to the water heater uh, with the valve again and with return valve too. So it uh, can go water only this side but not this side so uh, it allows water go only to the tank but not another way. And here I install a water pressure meter to know how much pressure I have in my system. Also, the cold water splits to this pipe and goes to the valve for my toilet. And it's a electric valve and you will taste it a little later. I will show you the system I make for the flush water for the toilet. And it also splits and goes to the kitchen side that is not yet full complete but I will show you anyway. And also the hot water from the water tank goes to my shower. You can see here to the shower cabin and to the other side it goes again to my kitchen side. I put some water in the tank. And now with you I will try to test this system the first time. All the valves closed right now and I will open them one by one to avoid a uh, mess leak of the water everywhere. I will turn my pump uh, little by little to be sure that no leaks around. Looks fine for now. The pressure is going on, it's about uh, two bars, it's uh, I see a leakage already, one there, and let me see, I think that's all for now. Okay, so I found one leak already, it's there, uh, where my water pressure accumulator is, and I will fix it and try again. The problem was very simple. Too few amount of the plumbing tape around the thread on this connection. Need more tape. So when I fix all the leaks, I assemble my piping back again and tied too hard on this connection with the pump and broke it. Yeah, great job. 
So now I have to order another pump. It's expensive, it's 100 dollars. And I need to wait about two weeks to get it because it's not selling everywhere in my country. So yeah, we will back to my water system a little later, I guess. Great job. And three weeks later I'm back with new pump and maybe another lens. I couldn't remember what lens I used last time, so eh, whatever. Uh, this pump is fairly similar to this one, but not the same. It's a uh, sure flow also, uh, but it's Aqua King 2 standard. So uh, this was Pro Master. A little more expensive but they are very similar and for me it's no difference so now I will install the new one instead of the one I broke also I saw that you could get a piece of the pump that I broke um, separately to repair it but uh, not in my country sadly maybe I will find it little later so it will be my second spare pump to use. Now to make connections with the pump, I will use only the force of my hand. No more pumps, please. While I was waiting for my new pump, I also finished building my kitchen that uh, you can see the full process in other videos I made and that gave me a chance to connect my new mixer tap that I install uh, with the kitchen sink to connect it to the, my main water system, which I did and here you can see the connection these two soft tubes, they connect directly to the mixer tap they are very long, about 2 meters, and uh, these long tubes give me a chance to move my connection away from the uh, very crowded space behind the kitchen to the space that is easy to connect and maintain. And also there are two valves, so I can, could close uh, connection with my water system to this mixer tap if I had any problems. And you can see this uh, connection has hot and cold water, so I have a chance to use the hot water in my sink. Okay, the new pump in place and connection fits from the previous pump, so it was easy connection. And now it's time for testing again. Wish me luck. Okay, I tested full system out and all fine it keeps pressure but i find one more leakage here uh, very very small but i need to fix it anyway okay i hope i fix this place let's find out pump reach uh, the pressure 2.2 bars and stops so all the system works fine to test out how good my system keeps pressure I make a pressure in my system and I set this red arrow to the pressure I have you can see what it's here so I move it there and now I will left it for like a couple of days and see what pressure I will have when I will be back. And I am back to check out how my system working. And you can see the black arrow that shows the actual pressure uh, didn't move. That means that my system holds pressure perfectly. It, uh, I left it for two days. So you can see the red arrow is there. 
so yep it holds the pressure perfectly and now I can test all my components knowing that I have no leaks. Now it's time to test my water heater. It's Ariston 10 liter AC water heater uh, with 1.2 kilowatts of power consumption. Uh, it's AC so I need to use my DC AC inverter to connect it. I connect this inverter with huge 50 square millimeters wires or zero AVG if you this kind of system and it should be enough. My battery is somewhat charged so I will power turn it on and also I will connect my heater through this um, power meter that will show me how exactly much power it requires to heat the water. So uh, it has only one control this knob uh, it sets basically the thermostat temperature and I will set it to kind of economical mode so let's see to the power meter it shows exactly 1.2 kilowatts of power and it has a timer at the top so I could know exactly how many time it requires to heat up my water and I will update you when this light will turn off. A little update, it's uh, 5 minutes of working and it's still heating of course. Um, I touch all the wires, check it uh, all the time and it's fine, they are not heating. And my voltage on the batteries drops to 11.77, which is totally normal, because when you take uh, such amount of power from the batteries, the voltage drops. Uh, I drain now about 100 amps from the batteries, so it's quite a big load and voltage drops, it's totally normal. So I will watch how it works and will update you even more 11 minutes still heating still no problems with wires and the voltage is 11.73 which is totally fine waiting 12 minutes and a little change the cooling system fan in my inverter start working which is totally fine I guess so now it's the same but a little noise from the fan it's pretty quiet though no problems here 17 minutes nothing special fan is working the wires are cool the water tank is cool too waiting it must be very soon oh it happens it happens right now so let's see it's zero um, drain now and we can see it drains 353 watts hour of power which is about yeah it's exactly about 30 amps from the batteries 30 amp hour from the batteries to heat the heater let's see how good it heats the water to test the final temperature of the heating water and it was 70 and a half minutes I remind you I install this very cool device I can show you here that shows the temperature of the water that goes through it and it requires no batteries which is super cool and super good looking so let's find out what temperature we have in a water tank the starting temperature and it's raising to the pump is turning on so it's 45 degrees oh it's pretty hot 
it's pretty hot out there. So it's 40, 46, we can say. 36 degrees. Uh, the home temperature in my house, it's super hot, it's about 55 degrees. So for the economical mode, it's pretty fine. I try it in my sink, kitchen sink. I don't know where the hot water is. This one. Ooh. Yeah, it's warm. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's, it's freaking hot. Really hot. So let's conclude the water heater experiment results. First of all, my water heater is working. It was a first water heater cycle for it, which is super nice. And my power system with my AGM batteries and my inverter is able to provide the required amount of power. Uh, it's 1.2 kilowatts of power for this water heater for a consistent 70 minutes amount of time with no problems, which is super nice. I'm not connected to any shore power. Uh, it was all happens from my batteries and inverter and that's all. So that means that I can go to the playing field and heat my water for the shower just from my batteries without any other power, which is super cool like this. And now we know that it requires three and a half hundreds watt hours of energy to heat the water from 17 to 45 degrees. And I will show you Fahrenheit right there. That means if I will turn on my water heater on my fully charged 400 ampere hours battery bank, it will drop my charge to the 370 ampere hours mark, which is pretty reasonable and I like this result. A few words about the water accumulator or water battery, it's sometimes called the expansion bank or water pressure uh, tank. So why you need that? This water battery has its own water tank and it's a pressurized water tank. That means that pump already make a pressurized amount of water that holds in this accumulator. And with that ability we can turn on the water a little and it will go not from the pump but from this tank. You see, pump is not working right now. I can turn on my water, wash my hands a little, and pump is not working. I can turn it more, and more, and more, a little more. And only now the pump is working, and now it will fill again this 5 liter of accumulator and it will stop automatically and we again will have amount of water that with that amount you can wash hands a couple of times and wash a cup for a tea and the pump will not work only one thing now we will wait the time that requires the, this pump to fill the water accumulator again And that's all. Now we will again have our 5 liters of the pressurized water. And what's a great thing, I can turn my water just a little bit, like this, for slow uh, washing the dishes, and pump will not turn on and off, on and off, on and off for this little amount of water. It will go from the water accumulator. It's a very nice device. And the last cool thing to check is my electric valve for the toilet flushing. It connects to my main water system and the other end goes to my toilet. If you send 12 volt power to it, it opens and the water able to pass through it to the toilet. If you're not sending 12 volts to it, it closes and no water could pass this valve. The tube from the valve goes here to my toilet. 
it's there. And with couple of adapters it connects to the flushing tube of my toilet. This toilet model actually has a manual pump. You could fill this tank with the water and with the pump you can make a pressure and water will go from there. But I disconnect this tube and connect it to my valve. And I install this small button that activates the valve. So let's see how it works. Whoa! A little too aggressive, but... Yeah, it works perfect. Um, I need to make some kind of barrier uh, to distribute water a little lower so it not will go from the toilet. But yeah, it's little adjustments here and there. It works super great. Um, I'm happy to have this automatic valve with cool button so I will not deal with filling uh, the water tank of the toilet even if I have the full functioning water system in my camper van. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it was interesting and useful at the same time. If it was, leave a like. And subscribe if you don't want to miss another videos about my water system. For example, very soon I will be install a grey water tank under my camper van. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next videos. Watching the